into Red Eye. Hello everyone, I'm Tom Shalhoub. Let's check in with TV's Andy Levy at the Red Eye Tease Deck. Andy? Thanks, Tom. Coming up on the big show, Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, or Anthony Weiner? Our panel debates which sex freak will have the biggest <laughs> impact on the election. <laughs> Plus, Lena Dunham raps for Hillary Clinton. Please don't change the channel. <laughs> and finally, millennials are drinking so much coffee that it could lead to a worldwide shortage. Looks like from now on, it's nothing but Adderall and crystal meth for Shalou. <laughs> Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Andy. Let's welcome our guests. She hates freedom so much, she calls french fries North Korean sticks. <laughs> Democratic strategist Jessica Tarlov. If you like the computer, you'll love the man. Comedian Nathan McIntosh. He's the tallest thing in New York that doesn't have the name Trump written on it. <laughs> Giant comedian Ben Kissel. Oh, no. And he only, only tells the truth, nothing but the truth, so help his paywall. Sitting right next to me is host of the Anthony Cumia Show, Anthony Cumia. Okay, let's start the show. She's unfit to serve because of a perv. That's the message of Donald Trump's latest ad, which hits Hillary Clinton for the FBI's investigation into her emails, now including the laptop of noted sexter and husband of longtime Clinton aide, Huma Abedin, Anthony Weiner. Here it is in all its glory. Decades of lies, cover-ups, and scandal have finally caught up with Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is under FBI investigation again after her emails were found on pervert Anthony Weiner's laptop. Think about that. America's most sensitive secrets, unlawfully sent, received, and exposed by Hillary Clinton, her staff, and Anthony Weiner. Hillary cannot lead a nation while crippled by a criminal investigation. Hillary Clinton, unfit to serve. <laughs> wow. Can we see the most important part of that again? After her emails were found on pervert Anthony Weiner's laptop. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where were the emails found again? <laughs> pervert Anthony Weiner's laptop. <laughs> Clearly the best election ever. Oh, wow. Oh, Anthony. Beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, and I, now I have trouble saying Anthony without pervert in front I of know, it. I know, pervert. <laughs> I think it's still Sometimes a plot. Sometimes a plot. It could. But look, I mean, I think this is a brilliant ad. I think it's great that Trump hired a voiceover guy. You yeah, know, yeah. you know, it's like it kind of takes it out of Trump's hands completely. It's it, it's like an action movie uh, trailer. <laughs> the the voice. I love. I'm. Uh, I, I love uh, those commercials. The scan lines. For some reason, they put in like old cathode ray tube scan lines. Yeah. Like you're watching it on an old television <laughs> set. It's staticky and black and white, and the freeze frame of Hillary like <laughs> just yelling. <laughs> you just know it's against her. Yeah. This uh, this ad. But as far as the content goes, I don't know. I don't know how much uh, weight the wiener thing is going to carry, but... Um, six ounces. You think six ounces? Is that <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen the pictures, and I believe it's six ounces of wiener weight. Of yes. wiener weight. Uh, but look, I think that the uh, big Kissel here, we got to, you know, the issue here is they put wiener in there. It might not, wiener might not hurt her, you know. I can't believe that we have to say the word wiener we're over gonna, and over oh, again in a presidential we're just, election. We're just starting. Yes. It's just beginning. <laughs> it's just begun. But just a block. That the fact that that it was on Anthony Weiner's computer, pervert Anthony Weiner. Yes. The, that may not hurt Clinton, but I think it blunts the attacks against him for his, you know, his locker room talk and one things like that, right? Yeah, it sort of nullifies the Billy Bush conversation that Donald Trump had on the uh, on the bus, and of course, it it takes a Weiner to beat a Bush. Yeah. Uh, apparently. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> it is it is a horror movie. What's happening with Anthony Weiner? We we thought he was dead after the uh, Sydney Leather situation where he could no longer run for mayor and now it's Wiener's return it's Wiener's revenge he is the gift that keeps on giving for Republicans I would hate to be him from the uh, from midnight to three o'clock in the morning when he's you know reflecting on his life I mean he must be more depressed than Kevin Spacey in the film American Beauty and if the Clinton campaign has their way he'll meet a similar demise Ooh, it's, it is it wow. is I would hate to be him right now uh, well, I don't remember what so happened he, in that movie. He gets movie. murdered I by the, oh, his, uh, man next door. I don't even want to think about that. And he didn't. Uh, he didn't know. Yeah, you yeah. got to see the movie again. Well, look, Nathan. <laughs> the. Yes. Um, I think I don't. I don't agree with Ben Kissel. I think Anthony Weiner sleeps fine at night. He's such yeah, a. Yeah, he's up sexting until yeah, all hours he, of the morning. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think the man has no shame. 
Uh, well, I don't know Anthony Weiner personally, and I don't know what, but I'd hope a man who was caught texting a 15-year-old girl has some sort of shame, you I know? He he has some sort of shame. He's in rehab now. He's in he rehab. Oh. In yesterday. What's the so what rehab? rehab is that? Yeah, how do you... Sex rehab. Sex. Yeah, but rehab. this is a 15-year-old. There's also, like, the whole other element of, like, this is a kid, you know? It's yeah. not just sex. This is... This, yeah. is elite, this is illegal on other, other, yeah. other levels. It's like turning the pumps on in the Titanic when it hits the bottom of the ocean. Oh, <laughs> there's a rehab for him now. It's done. He's ruined his life already. Yeah. yeah. It's a kid. It's a kid. I mean, this isn't... It's children. Yeah, this isn't rehabable, right? Yeah. If like, comedy doesn't work out, you have to be a prosecutor in the Anthony Weiner trial. Oh, I'll be in there. It's kids. <laughs> it's I mean, it's kids. <laughs> <laughs> but Jessica, I think that Weiner is the kind of guy he always thinks there's a comeback. I think he's... He pitched, does. Do, I mean, Last time around, he got caught. And then he made a movie. Yeah. He let them film And then him. I love at the end with it, he's like, I really have no idea why I let them do this. Oh, like, yeah. when he uh, processed just what he had done and exposing his family to this. And, yeah, I mean, the guy doesn't have any shame. I, I don't think rehab for sex addiction issues usually works. Kid, so I guess kids. It's, yeah. it's a kid. And you yes. see, the girl spoke yes. out saying, like, how humiliating and awful this was and it shouldn't be affecting a presidential election that this happened. Um, yeah, I think she, didn't she come out? She was like... Anti-Trump in some way, wasn't she? I this mean, girl. I, hope I think so. she wants the whole she was, story to well, go away. Well, I think away. she doesn't want to be involved. Yes. I don't. I'm, I wouldn't. Uh, I think most fifteen-year-olds are anti-Trump. trade for Taylor Swift so. tickets. So. Anthony yeah. Weiner looks like an anorexic turtle who lost its shell. I mean, no way a fifteen-year-old girl wants to be associated with him in any way. She's just trying to get through high school. Yes. Okay. Well, look. You want to. You want to talk about a no. Okay. Next story. <laughs> America's redheaded stepchild Lena Dunham That's... wrote a rap song about. I know I shouldn't have said that. No. About Hillary Clinton. Trigger warning. It is terrible. <laughs> hey guys, it's MC Pantsu. Oh, my hobby is rap music, but my passion, defending the nation's baddest grandmother. I'm talking Hillary, Rodham, Clinton. My girl's a rider, progressive freedom fighter, going up against a dude who's a climate change denier. She worked harder than her man did, still saw her grandkid, and people have the nerve to ask her what her plan is. The plan is to win against hatred and slurs. Break it down in three words. I'm with her. And what would a Lena Dunham video be without her taking off her clothes? Tolerable? Trigger warning. It's still awful. Now I'm going to take off my pantsuit to reveal a more sensual pantsuit. Because that's what you do for the candidate you love. Not really sure I understand the logic here. The rap is trash and why are you wearing Hillary's lingerie? Dance with me, Cynthia. Take your pantsuit off and show us your sensual pantsuit, Cynthia. No, I'm good. I wonder if I'm actually hurting her chances of winning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The it's best response would literally be no response. Yeah. <laughs> if we just moved on right now, Let's didn't say a word. Let's talk about robots. You love yeah, robots. Yeah, go to robots. <laughs> what about that perv, Anthony Weiner? Let's go back there. Kids. Uh, kids. I mean, kids. kids. It's a 15-year-old. Oh, my. What happened? You know, I want uh, the people at home to know, in the studio here, we were just watching it. There was no, there was no laughing. No, it was you hard can't. to do. There was no moaning. There was just, it was as if we were in a trance. Is that what she's yes. trying to do to us, Jessica? Put uh, us in a trance? I, no, because you still need to get up and go vote so I, I don't think she wants you in a trance it's it's real bad um and i'm a hillary fan and a millennial and i guess i have a central pantsuit on under this but <laughs> I, it's totally disturbing and i don't know who that targets right now i mean i don't think that you yeah, know it's not hillary already has the like girls watching yeah. crowd sona. right they're all going out for hillary right so what right. is it is this to pick up new votes but or it was who's fun it for? or die i mean yeah. it was supposed to be really funny yeah or just november 3rd die you have to know who you're voting for right that you're not and you're not waiting for like hey man i hope somebody makes a rap about who to vote well it's a get for. out the vote call right yeah. it's like what i mean you can you make gonna... sure you get up on tuesday and go vote wouldn't this make you not vote wouldn't you this wouldn't this is, make you definitely know, voting, voting you know, like, hope the country burns like wouldn't this make you just go fine if this is what we're doing i don't want to be a part of this that's that's what it does to me but right. kissel sure. what do you think okay but first of all why is it so bad i mean i've seen comedy well, videos oh of people God. rapping okay, so, why is this one so uh, so so much more terrible i will First of all, I uh, hate to be a bleeding heart liberal, but sh this is a woman who constantly discusses cultural appropriation, and this was the definition of cultural appropriation. I believe Lena Dunham has used uh, black men as props of her reality show life. If you look at what happened with Odell Beckham Jr., when he just sit he just sat next to her, and she made up an entire story about how he oh, did not yeah, have yeah. sex she with her. She got in trouble for that, yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. So I think that there is something. Uh, she's, she has... Uh, 
she, she's she's crazy. She's an individual who uses everyone, you know, to to fit her narrative. This endorsement <laughs> hurts Hillary Clinton. She should have never said anything. It's the equivalent of the KKK endorsing Donald Trump. Shut up. Whoa. She recently Whoa. called for the she called for the extermination we'll of all white straight men, and that's not an exaggeration. Go to her Twitter page. She says she wants to murder all straight white men, she which did, is exactly what if, the KKK says about up, a different group. If we can gear up David Duke's rap, though, it's pretty good. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty good one. It is. He doesn't strip down. You got to say that for Dave, oh. David Duke. Isn't that right? That, he never strips. I don't understand why she feels compelled to take her clothes up. I think it's because all of her friends and uh, liberal uh, associates say it's so brave and yeah. courageous that she has no shame for her body. And, does, and then if an attractive woman is naked and you're appreciating it, she's a slut, you're a pig, everything that goes along with it. But that's what we want to see. Sure. We don't want to see Lena Dunham naked ever. <laughs> Look what they did to Melania. Kids, kids. Kids. Look what they did to Melania Trump when those pictures were uh, yes. released of her uh, modeling. I mean, they crucified her as if she was, you know, a terrible human being. Um, but does does looking at? Uh, I want to ask about the when you see Lena Dunham and she's stripping down. Does it make does it make it less enjoyable to see, uh, you know, uh, other kinds of naked women or, or something? No, you need it like a sorbet to cleanse the palate. <laughs> It's it's the worst possible wait, so wait, thing. She's I making immediately. I gotta look at something naked. Andy, where's Andy? So, <laughs> so you're saying you want Andy naked? Anything but Lena Dunham. It's making you go out and see more strippers. Her, I'm going to go right out to the strip club yes, after good. this. Now. That's it. I mean, you she, made me. It's counterproductive, isn't it, Jessica? I, I hear from men a lot that they're not finding her particularly attractive. I I sympathize <laughs> with, you know, she's not the cookie cutter body. Um, I, it's a lot of nudity for me. I but never said that. I said well, she's a who well, shouldn't have her clothes no. off. And, and the set, the set I'm irony, sorry. The set Let's irony just is, be real. The set <laughs> irony is she is the cookie cutter body. But I want to say if there are people out there, younger girls who oh do my God, get confidence. I just got that. That's yeah, really funny. Who do get confidence from her, uh, yeah. you know, owning her body. I think that's good. I mean, you know, I have a terrible body. I used to be 380 pounds. My, my skin is falling off my bones. It's, it's desperate. It's, you know, it's like a it's like a really great barbecue. But sadly, it's my body. Um, so well, you got to so make a rap video. I can should we, make a rap video. Can we just go, but I mean, again, yeah, her taking her clothes off, whatever we want to say, you know, but the, but the video itself and the song itself are, are worse yeah, it's, than, the, than, the, than, the, than the clothes. It's true. It's just hit another octave. The audio. <laughs> Kids. The audio version. <laughs> I mean, the, the, what Would she's you? saying and the way she's going about it, how un, ugh, hate to say, how unfunny the, and I get it's supposed to like making fun of itself, yeah. but even in that, you're like, I mean, what are we, what are, what are we doing here? Maybe yearn for MC Rove from years ago. <laughs> oh my so. God. Yeah, so true. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we, uh. I think we found many ways to say we didn't like that. All right, sometime, <laughs> sometime later this month, Apple is expected to release iOS 10.2, and nothing made me more excited than finding out that it'll bring 72 new emoji with it. Among the delightful new ways I'll be able to express myself, the face palm, the shrug, the gorilla, a.k.a. harambe, and, of course, Andy's new favorite, the black heart. Ooh. <laughs> but sadly, still missing the John Bolton <laughs> emoji. That would come in useful, wouldn't it? When you're attacking the UN, Jessica? <laughs> I'll use it constantly. Uh, what do you think? Do, do we need new emoji? Do you get excited? I for like this? it. Oh, yeah. And I love, you know, like your Bitmoji Friday. I use my Bitmoji. My Bitmo avatar. What's that? My yeah. avatar. You know, she like looks just like me. Oh, yeah. I use her on Twitter all the time. Um, does, it, does it look at all like a young Joseph Gordon-Levitt? I mean, a little bit. It's, like, it's actually alone, more Tom. feminine than I am. Yeah. So. I mean, in, in that yeah. form, you could, you know. Hey, I get mistaken for him in Avatar World, too. Um, no, so I'm excited about it, but this update, I was excited to see that my sister, who's on an MTV show, was one of the stock, is it GIF or GIF? Uh, you can say whatever you want. But no, one GIF, is wrong. GIF. GIF is a stock GIF, yeah. which is super exciting because I can send her around now. I think That's it's the other way, but I'm sick of arguing yeah, with you people. Uh, yeah, I think well, it, it is. Doesn't I don't want to talk about. Someone here must know. I don't want to talk about that. Andy, halftime. It's, it's a I'd discussion like to know. for losers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of these new emoji? 
I, I don't really care. I uh, I like I still like calling people like uh, like a crazy oh, wow. person. I like uh, calling people voices. That's awesome. Awesome. No, that I know, but what's wrong archaic. with you people? It's We're calling people. <laughs> like, just, and I'll, I'll text you, but why do I gotta go? Like, because uh, you know they have jobs and stuff now. Like, are people? Uh, who, oh, uh, now I can't. I it's, can't believe I still gotta type female astronaut. Uh, now I'm gonna type that in. You know what I mean? Just type it. You monster. Talk what do you do? Well, it's yeah, get me Murray Hill five six eight. <laughs> love to. Love to. If I can be connected, I want to be connected. But it takes too much time, doesn't it? The, it, the phone call. Yes. It, yes. I mean, Nathan is calling people. I mean, I guess if you're taking a break from watching Designing Women or something <laughs> like that. I mean, it's old school, the phone call. And Designing really Women sure was what a that, show. Uh, okay, is it an old show? It's, it's an old so show. Good. There we go. It is okay, a good okay. show. You okay. should spend um, all your time watching it. Well I, well, I don't. I call people. That's where I spend my time. I call people on the phone and I still talk to them. I'm wasting what time? Designing. I'm talking to friends. I'm talking to people. Who are you yelling at your friends like that? Yes. Um, I miss words. I want words back. I get text messages words. now. Uh, and he, I, I feel like Nicolas Cage and National Treasure. I have to figure out what the hell they're talking about. I'm always late to the party. Yeah. I always think somebody's pregnant because they hit the wrong emoji button. I mean, it's oh, very confusing. There, there is a pregnant, there is a pregnant, there is a pregnant emoji, emoji, which is yeah. an offensive way to tell somebody that you're pregnant. Absolutely. Um, well, I don't think you do it that way. Emojis I want are, words. You um, with emojis are word. dangerous. With your friends, they'll call you some type of horrible slur if you yeah. use them mm -hmm. uh, to your friends, to your male friends. And if you send them to girls, if you have a girlfriend or something and maybe you're communicating with an another girl, they could see an emoji clean across the room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're looking at, what was that, a heart? A smiley, winky face? Damn it, she saw the emoji. Yeah, what they don't care about if you call another woman, your girlfriend's like, well, look at this guy. He's using the phone. Oh, he's yeah. respectable. But I, I don't like it. I get that you're supposed I'm to do it. I'm not calling you. I'm calling people. That I, you know what I mean? <laughs> we got I don't it. understand this whole calling thing is such a big game. I'm calling I am it's, it's still, it's still, well, we, we don't have each other's numbers, but it still has the, it still has, it's a, it's a part of the phone. It's well, one of the apps. This conversation is making me want to call the suicide hotline. <laughs> That's all I know. And you would have to call them. You can't text them with no, emojis. I'll send them a broken yeah, black heart to death. Aren't and they'll know I'm sad. Coming up. Now. Reports say millennials are causing a coffee crisis. So I'm going to give you the skinny latte <laughs> next. <laughs> It's a millennial segment. Se segment. Segment? Millennials. <laughs> so it only applies to me. So millennials, people want to blame you for oh. everything. Like the coming demise of cold cereal, bars of soap, and Big Macs. Those products are all on the decline due to the fact that young people don't want to buy them anymore. Now, the Daily News claims you're using up all the coffee, based on a Bloomberg market analysis, which said that consumption is rising as supplies are getting tighter. And the Daily News suggests the supply of beans is going to run out. I doubt it. Young consumers' love of coffee and your need to while away half your afternoon in a hipster cafe ends up benefiting the whole coffee economy. Like those, those other products, like Big Macs, soap, and cereal, are suffering because of lack of demand. The fact that people are drinking coffee at a younger and younger age means that demand will stay up, prices will remain high, and that will cause more farmers to get into the coffee business. That's capitalism. That's good for everyone. So keep doing what you're doing, millennials. Not everything's your fault. <laughs> Tarlov. Uh, the uh, yes, part of this part of this article. Did you read the article that I sent? I, I did. Sent I, I do all my homework. Did you see that part of the the blame they laid on global warming? They said it's going to wipe out the coffee crop. Do you believe that nonsense? Global warming is <laughs> going to wipe out the entire world. But coffee grows in the warm climates. I think it's only going to improve the <laughs> coffee growing situation. That's not what I read. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's not what you read because I didn't. Because did, you didn't send me the good <clears throat> article. Yeah. Obviously. Well, you look. Sent me the bad one. What do you, do, should we blame millennials for drinking all the coffee? Did it surprise you that? People People are drinking coffee now as young as 14 used to be the average age 18 19. It doesn't surprise me. I've actually never had a cup of hot coffee in my whole life growing up. What? I thought it would yeah. stunt my growth, which was obviously not going to be an issue. Um, so I never got into you're very it. Tall. And I'm, I'm very <laughs> tall. Sturdy, some people. No, you're tall. Sturdy. Uh, tall and lovely. Yeah, but um, it doesn't surprise me because my friends were even starting that young. So now I'm 32. So in middle school, people were like, oh, let's have coffee or some jolt. We drank a lot of jolt. Oh, no. that's, I don't I like that. Coffee. I like the good coffee, but the thing is, I want to say thank you to the millennials, Nathan, because yes. they're the ones He's a millennial. That are, he yeah, told me he was 30. They're the ones uh -huh. that are driving this coffee consumption. It's benefiting me. I love these high-end coffee shops. Sure, I like coffee. I, I drank coffee in my life. I just want to ask, like, as a, I guess I'm a millennial, you know, yeah. but what, what are people buying other than soap? 
Soap, uh, liquid soap. Bye. Bars. Oh, the bars, the bars, bars are, are What's down. What's the bars? They don't want bars. They want to squirt. So what if it's gross? If you share it then, like let's say that, you know, you share your shower with somebody yeah. who you're not romantically involved with. Once you do that, then you can share stuff. No, soap but can't get dirty. Exactly. Oh, the it's surface can't. comes off in a second. It's, it's so disgusting. Brand That's new insane. surface. Every That's time you touch it, it's it just you rub it off and it's, yeah. yeah. It slowly uh, melts away. You can't rub off certain things. You can. That's what soap is. I I disagree. You guys really, you, you can, you guys can tell you can rub off anything. I'll use soap that anybody yeah. else has used. That's a fact. Mail me your soap. I don't care how disgusting you are. <laughs> I, I will shower with that soap. Did it's guys, soap. Did you remember when you used to go to the beach and then you'd go and take a shower and there was always a, bar, a wet bar and then you'd just use it, wouldn't you? Of course. It's soap. It <laughs> can't you be dirty. No it's one does soap. That. Yes. <laughs> Give me soap. Who I have no soap? problem with any soap. By, by the definition of it being soap, it's got to be clean. It's, it's be clean. soap. There's no way it can't be. Well, let's, let's, That's why I stopped on this article. By the way, I mean, I read the rest of it. I hope that you know, but it's soap. It's soap. <laughs> but this is good. I'm, I'm with you, Tom. Millennials, they're keeping coffee shops in business. I don't know what they're doing uh, in those coffee shops all day, but they're maybe writing. Design work or, or writing right for Slate or uh, maybe HuffPo, um, whatever. <laughs> but I think it's good for the economy and it's good for uh, it's good for us as a, as a whole. Let's keep the copy, uh, coffee consumption up. Yes. I was thinking with the global warming thing. Yeah. Uh, with the sea level rising and coffee being grown in the mountains, yep. there'll be less people, more coffee. <laughs> Ooh, See, global warming one helps really the problem. hyper person. <laughs> helps the problem. That, but you think that it, even if it kills off people, it's good because the beans are going to be. Beans are still going to be perfect. Also, if that kills off people, it's less people drinking coffee. Right. I mean, it all works itself out. Coffee wins out. at the end of the day, no matter coffee what. Coffee will always win. <laughs> yeah. Well, essentially, the uh, I like that you have this economy. Part of the article, they were saying that uh, you know these people in third world countries are suffering. But actually, when the prices of coffee go up, it can only help. Am I right? You, you are correct. I want more coffee consumption. I love, I love, uh, you know, I prefer the free trade coffee, but I'll go with any coffee. No, uh, you know what? Pinch. Free trade, it's, it's a myth. It's, it's a, a myth. myth. Yeah. I mean, you, are you saying like fair trade? Yeah. You're fair talking about trade, fair trade. Yeah. Yeah. Fair trade's just a label. The thing is, all yeah. coffee is fair trade because we're buying it. If I pay a lot for my beans, <laughs> there you go. Uh, then yeah, it's yeah. fair because. Right. That's the such a Trumpian argument. <laughs> but it drives up the price everywhere, I'm telling you. Okay, coming up. <laughs> it's that time again. Halftime with TV's Andy Levy. That's next. And don't forget, the Red Eye Podcast is back in a big way. Subscribe on iTunes and on foxnewsradio.com. <laughs> Welcome back. Time to find out what we got wrong and what we missed from TV's Andy Levy at the Red Eye News Deck. Hey, Andy. Hey, Tom. How are you? Good. Excellent. Uh, Trump ad features pervert Anthony Weiner. Uh, Anthony Cumia. Tom said after seeing this ad, he had trouble saying Anthony, your name, without saying pervert after it, which made me start thinking, do you think it would have been even worse if the commercial said emails found on pervert Anthony Cumia's laptop? <laughs> <laughs> Would have, that would have been sounded worse to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, no doubt about that. Yeah. Wow. You might have had to fire yourself. Again. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, Kissel, you said you'd hate to be Wiener from between midnight and 3 a.m. reflecting on his life. Yeah. I don't think that's what he does between midnight and 3 a.m. <laughs> I know. I understand. Well, now he's in uh, cyber sex rehab, yeah, so perhaps okay. he has time to think. Yeah. Uh, which leads me to, Jessica, you said you don't believe rehab for sexual addictions really works. I did say that. Do you, how do you know? I, I, I've heard. I don't know. It, it just doesn't seem. A friend? Seem, a friend. Yes, a friend yeah. told me. Okay. No, I don't know. I. I feel like I hear a lot about people who went and then they're back to doing weird things yeah. and, you know, texting little girls and yeah. it just seems not, it seems like a thing that you really do for PR and then you just think I'll just get out and create a new screen name. Right. So. Okay. Which is kind of what, because it was back in, I think, 2011, Wiener said he was going to rehab. And yeah, they covered that in the movie. He didn't really go. Right. Because it doesn't work. <laughs> well, I think he didn't really go because he didn't want to get cured at the time, yeah. at least. Or that. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, you said you don't know Wiener personally. Really? Yeah. That's your story now? <laughs> <laughs> it's something, I mean, yeah. yeah I don't, I don't All know. All those years just thrown under the bus, huh? I texted him a little bit. You when called I was, him. You I called him. Call. Yeah, I called him when yeah. I was 15 and he yeah. couldn't send me a picture of his business. You know, that's why you call people. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> his business. Ah, uh, the Lena Dunham rap. Uh, Jessica, at the end, the very last thing she says is, you know, she wonders if she might be hurting Hillary by doing stuff like this. Yeah. First of all, if that question is raised in I your know. mind, maybe don't do it. 
Yeah, I think about that a lot <laughs> as someone who's very pro hills. Yeah. Um, I want to make sure that I make her appealing, like by calling her hills. Well, um, no, exactly. Yeah. So, you just yeah. changed my mind. Oh, <laughs> awesome. She sounds cool. By the end of tonight, we're all going to be with her. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I will say that honestly, after I watched this video, I wished it weren't too late for me to go register so I could vote for Trump. <laughs> but it is too late. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Nathan, what do you think about the fact that this video will be seen by kids? <laughs> that sucks for kids. Yeah. Uh, there's better rap out there. Uh, <laughs> there just is. You know, we got uh, we got younger, newer rappers. You know, Little Yachty. You can go listen to him. Not uh, sure. Chance. Yeah. Chance the rapper's great. You no, know. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not. I mean, kids can't even vote, right? So it's it's wasted. It's just yeah. now just an offensive thing that hits their eyes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Kissel, you said this video was the definition of cultural appropriation. Yes. But they made jokes about that, so that makes it okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Andy. Yeah. I missed the jokes, uh, yeah. so I will uh, take back my uh, criticism. Yeah. You also pointed out that Dunham tweeted that she wanted to murder all straight white men. Well, she wants to abolish. Uh, she no, wants to abolish, abolish straight white men. Yeah. Yes, but, you know, the people that gave her all the money that allowed her to be right. a person. Well, then there'd now. be no male characters on girls. Oh, that's very true. And my friend Henry was a star on Girls or guest yeah. star, so he would be out of money. Yeah. So that's sad. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. The worst part of the whole video, by the way, was the phony self-deprecation. Yes. I, I mean, just drove me nuts. She should just be quiet for four days. All she's doing is driving people, like you said, to Trump. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, Nathan, I will commend you for making this conversation on the story about the stupidity of the video instead of all about her appearance. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't really, uh, I, I get it if people aren't attracted to her, that's cool. I don't really yep. carry the way, but it's yep. more, uh, I mean, my God, my Good God. For you. Absolutely. Five days away, this, this doesn't help anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, new emoji. Tarlov, do you really like that emoji crap? Oh my god, I love it. Oh you haven't seen it, because we follow each other on Twitter. You haven't seen uh, how often I use it? I, first of all, I haven't been on Twitter in like three weeks. It's been okay. amazing. <laughs> um, but I've been, used my avatar at least three times. Binmoji, it's the worst thing in the world. Why? It's I have so a friend, cute. a really good friend, who I made the mistake of telling her how much I hate it, and now he texts Binmoji me all the time. That's what you do. Yeah. I mean, to people who don't like it because you feel like you can beat them down. Yeah. Um, and eventually they just succumb to the cuteness no. of your avatar. No, it's yeah. hideous. It's hideous. <laughs> I love to get your Bitmoji texts. It's awesome, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Nathan, seriously, phone calls? Yeah. In I this mean, economy? Is that the craziest yeah. thing anybody's ever heard? Yeah, Calling obviously. Yeah. What's wrong with all you people? Yeah. How busy are you monsters? You don't do anything. Answer your phone. God. <laughs> uh, Kissel, you said you always think someone's pregnant because they hit the wrong emoji. Well, yeah. I told you that was an accident. Uh, well, I'm, I was just so happy for you. It was one time. I know. Technology, you never know how quick it's moving. Mm. Uh, millennials are depleting the world's coffee supply. Tom, you poo-pooed the idea of climate change being a danger to the world's coffee supply because you said coffee grows in warm climates. Yeah. That's some of that good science I have come to expect from you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it does make sense, doesn't it? No, it really doesn't. <laughs> Uh, studies show that the threat of warming temperatures will reduce the global area suitable for coffee by about 50%. That's what the, I don't believe that, Andy. Yeah. Uh, global warming will also increase the threat of diseases like coffee rust and pests like the coffee berry borer. Oh. We'll deal with that. Pesticides, Andy. Pesticides. <laughs> we can't use pesticides. All right, they're, all, like they're all outlawed. They taste good to me. <laughs> uh, in fact, Anthony, I, I think your theory that gl this global warming will be good for coffee because there'll be fewer people, so there'll be more coffee for each person, that's more logical than what Tom said. <laughs> of course. Yeah. It is. I liked his, too. Yeah. I like any type of post-apocalyptic no, coffee absolutely, story. Yeah. Well, yeah. Plenty of coffee in Mad Max. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Nathan, soap is disgusting. Grow up. I, you know, Between I don't the know why. the phone calls and the soap. I'm going to tell you this. Ten like years an 80 year old man. Ten yeah. years from now, women, young women are going to find men who use the phone and bars of soap very hot. They're you know? really not. They're, yes, they are. Oh, women right now find older people attractive, like older men. You know what I mean? They, they, the but not because they do gross things right. like that. Old men use soap. Aren't they? they use yeah. liquid I soap. Do I know plenty of do. old men and they use body They wash. use that little no. squeeze. There's no way. They use bars not of soap. Hand soap, not shower soap. The little men. You, you use soap. Nathan, How many old men shower? Soap on the phone! Nathan, what do you consider an old man? A thousand, 35. No, 90 year old men no. use soap! I don't think women are attracted women, yeah. to 90 year old men. <laughs> Young women? 
Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You don't want to, a young woman doesn't want to wash a scaly 90 year old man's back with a bar of soap while nice he tells save. her stories about that was the a war? a very nice save, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I can't breathe. I am done. Oh, you're done? Forever. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Andy. Coming up, monkeys. But first, I interviewed the stars of Netflix's new comedy documentary, Undecided. The new documentary on Netflix, Undecided, takes you inside the campaigns from the primaries to the election. Let's take a look at these two undecided voters trying out their new slogan at a Hillary rally. Imagine what we can do together. Imagine an economy very much like what we did have in the 1990s. I'll settle for that. You guys mind if you just follow me? We're not really comfortable with the message there. We're for Hillary. Joining me now, the co-stars of Undecided, Devram Stiefler and Jason Selvig. Guys, uh, okay, this clip, this is interesting because I think settle for Hillary, it's a pretty good slogan, and I almost feel like she's been embracing that. She's not saying it. But I feel like she's kind of pushing that. Do you think that? Yeah, now she is. Now she is, But yeah. we filmed that back in February, and right. her people were not happy about it. They weren't. No, yeah, they approached no. you, and then uh, they, did they throw you out? No, well, we were there behind her the whole time. They couldn't really throw us out during the middle of the speech, so they kind of had to wait. Uh, until it was over and then try and shuffle us out the door. Yeah. Yeah. After it was trending on Twitter, then they threw us threw yeah. us out afterwards when exactly. we tried to give her a shirt. Although yeah. lately I almost feel like she's been embracing the spirit of it because she's running ads now that say that people they say I don't really like Hillary but I'm voting for her. I mean, right. I mean right. that was kind of the feeling, you know, when we came up with this joke and in the film we tried to say things that had at least a grain of truth to them and now it's only become more true. Yeah. Right. So I want to know about how this thing came about. Did you say, let's do a Netflix documentary, or did you just start going out there and horsing around, and then it all came together? Well, we, we, we did a couple. We, we've been doing comedy like this for years and years and years, like comedy in the real world, yeah. dealing with people that you know we disagree with. You know, Thank you for having us on here. Well, but listen, I like the, uh, you know, I think when you turn it up on these people, uh, you make everyone uncomfortable across right. the board, right? Yeah, that, I mean, that's that. this is not a, a left-wing hit piece. We are getting both sides. Yeah. And Hillary, I think, actually, we got worse than anybody in the Yeah, movie. I mean, so, so we had our settle for Hillary thing. Yeah. Uh, we went to another rally later, and in the film, it's all justified by the narrative of the film, but we take our shirts off in the front row of a Hillary rally, and <laughs> we become super fans. <laughs> Uh, now, her people knew that we were the settle for Hillary people, and still, two days after that, used us in a campaign ad. Uh, and so that that created a little bit of backlash there from, from people. I mean, how could they make such a mistake? Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I mean, look, they, but I, feel, I almost feel like she's embracing you guys, and i got to give her credit for that. Now, I want to show another clip. This one was Marco Rubio. You took a, di a different tack with him. Look. <laughs> That's enough. I have to tell everyone the truth. Marco Rubio is trying to steal my girlfriend. He is. I, they met in New Hampshire, and, and she doesn't look at me in the same way anymore. I don't see any more love in her eyes. And he's, I'm serious. He's using his power and his money. And yeah, he's a little bit better looking than me. And that's true. You, you, you shouldn't vote for him. He's probably going to steal yours, too. He's, he is good looking, isn't he? He's, He's a, a little bit better looking, looking than I am, that's true, yeah. <laughs> now again, he, the, a lot of these candidates, they have this kind of frozen smile on their face. They want to they wanna approach it with a good attitude. Right. But uh, you did get thrown out of that one as well, right? Yeah, well, Devram did. Yeah. I, I stayed back for that one. You were very supportive, though. Yes. He came outside, I was being let out by the police, and uh, in, in the film, My Name's Dan, he's like, Dan, is everything all right? Like, I had no idea there? this guy was <laughs> such a creep. This is terrible. Uh, I, I said we tried to have some of our jokes have, you know, a grain of truth to them, and some not so much. Yeah. yeah so. I want to show another clip. This one is my favorite. Now, it gets a little dangerous. It is at a uh, gun range oh, yeah. with Rick Santorum. Take a look. Yeah. Rick could do anything. 
Nice, that was the next shot. Nice shot, Dad. You want to take a shot? Yeah, I'd love to. Can you help me load this? Sure. Is We're it good to go? to go? Just shoot? We're all ready to go. I don't know if the safety's on or not. Ah! That is awesome. I feel like I've got so much power right now. No one's going to mess with me when I got one. Oh. <laughs> Jason, why did he give you the gun? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly, I don't know. We, we we walked into this rally. We thought maybe we could shake his hand, yeah, and that would be the best like case scenario. Then we're sitting with him watching a video for 15 minutes. Well, you skipped the part where the the first thing that happens is Jason says hello, and uh, Rick assumes that Jason is running the whole show. So it's like, oh, come in here, watch the watch the safety video, come right this way and shoot the gun. And so he, I, yes. I've never shot a gun before in my life. Well, That's hey, actually you did true. Good. I yeah, and I didn't drop it and, and kill a presidential candidate. I guess that's, that's so, the improv rule, right? Yes yeah. to everything. Yes to everything. You want to shoot? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, sure. Devram Stiefler and Jason Selvig, thank you so much. Check it out, Undecided, on Netflix. It's hilarious. We'll be right back with more Red Eye. Forget the polls. The only election predictions I trust come from Chinese monkeys. And unless the monkey is wrong, which never happens, Trump will win on Tuesday. Look! Did you see that monkey? He was embracing the Trump. <laughs> he, was, he was hugging it. Look at him. He's hugging and kissing the Trump. It's no contest. The Trump. <laughs> no way. And since this is the last red eye before the election, we wanted to make our own predictions. We couldn't get approval to have a monkey in the studio, so we did the next best thing. We added Andy to the discussion. Now I'm going to ask Andy his predictions so you can see how it's, see how it's done. Okay, guys? Yeah. Andy, uh, yeah. predictions for the election. Uh, first of all, I, don't, I think the monkey picked Trump because he thought Trump's hair was actually a baboon's ass. <laughs> no, no, no. That could be. No. All right. I could be wrong about that. And that's I'm a, not wrong about my election prediction. Okay. Though. What are they? Uh, I used to think this was going to be a Clinton blowout. I really did, like uh, as of a couple weeks ago. I don't think that anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's going to be really close electorally. It's sort of like, you know how there are football games that are offensive, just blow, you know, uh, just slugfest, and yes. you know whoever ends up with the ball last is going to win? Right. This is the opposite of that. Whoever has the scandal last is going to lose, <laughs> is what I think is happening here. So I filled in my electoral map uh, on, on Thursday, and I came up with Clinton 271, Trump 267. So that's what I think wow. it's going to be. Wow, that mm -hmm. is close, Andy. And I, I wasn't looking to try to make it close or anything. I just legitimately filled in the states the way I thought they would go, and that's how it came out. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Any? What's the surprise state in your? I have uh, I have Florida and Ohio going to Trump, and Colorado and Pennsylvania going to Clinton right now. Florida oh. could go to Clinton though and make this a bigger blowout. So, what, did you have New Hampshire as Clinton? New Hampshire, I have for. Uh, I can't tell because I had I could only print in black and white. Oh yeah. Uh, I had New Hampshire as a dark color. Okay. Yeah. Vermont is a light color. So it could go either way. It really uh, could. Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Anthony? Wow. Yeah. Um, first of all, I love grab a right by the monkey. Yeah. <laughs> that was adorable. That's, that's what you gotta do. And, and uh, I'm saying. Mondale Reagan type blowout for Donald Trump. But Donald Trump. Look for Donald Trump to take New York. Take New York. This is insane. <laughs> oh my goodness. He'll take Just Manhattan. I've always bet on the long shot at the track and Why I always not? lose. Pennsylvania. <laughs> Michigan. Well, the late bets are going for Trump. Yes, I understand this and I think it's going to be a lot more of a blowout for Trump than anyone is even thinking. Uh, what do you think there, big man? Well, I've got good news for both sides. I do think it'll be a tight election. I think Hillary will be the fifth president to uh, win the election but lose the popular vote She'll what? Win the electoral college and i also believe she will be impeached and i think in two years we'll have a president tim kane and i think a republican wins a paul ryan-esque republican wins in 2020 wow that's my prediction so tim kane will be a president for most of hillary clinton's term you know you're the first person i heard you think trump is going to win the uh, the uh, popular and he's going to lose the electoral. It's possible. I mean, that will will that drive them crazy or oh. what, Nathan? I I, kind of, I think this, I think popular vote goes to Trump. And I, you know, I, a few weeks ago, I wouldn't have thought that he might win. But I think if he did win, I wouldn't be surprised by it. But I do the electoral her popular. But I, do we have to go all the way to 2020? Am I making a prediction? <laughs> no, that? no, it's, no. It's just okay. he's, he likes to be extra interesting. Okay, I think I think <laughs> I think he I think I think Trump wins popular vote. Uh, Hillary wins electoral. Insane, Jessica. What do you think? I'm going to go with...
what Andy said plus a little bit more. I don't think it's just 271. I think she ends at 293. So she gets North Carolina and Nevada on top of the blue wall, like our firewall states. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's it. But the popular vote, I think, is going to be very close. Like, it could don't be uh, 2%. Trump got more, more votes than any <laughs> candidate in history. Very special thanks, Jessica Tarlov, Nathan primary. McIntosh, Ben Kissel, Anthony Cumia, and TV's Andy Levy. That does it for me. I'm Tom Shalhoub. I'll see you next time.